In this video, we are going to have a first look at how you should check if there is something wrong in your Foundry VTT instance. This is a troubleshooting guide for standard users to find out an error and fix it as soon as possible. Of course, there is are many reasons of weird behaviors or errors that are not depending on your installation but on how the module has been built and interacts with your Foundry VTT system. Therefore, there are many things to consider and I would suggest you at least a way to identify and disable the faulty module. I would like to give you a systematic method to check the standard things for your own and if it's still not enough, please reach out Foundry Discord server community or directly to the module system owner by posting a bug here. So you can see all the different modules, you can select this one and proceed to post a bug. Open up the developer tool by pressing F12. That's the basic tool for Foundry VTT developer to debug JavaScript, but I'm going to use it in a simpler way. In the console, you have all the logs for Foundry VTT core system, system and modules. In this way, you can check if there is an, any anomaly in the log and try to figure out where it comes from. I would suggest to keep it if you have installed new modules and as you can see I have 75 modules installed. Let's start to check if all the modules have been loaded in the right way. I want to look at only the errors so I can change the log level here removing the info. There is also a better view by showing the console sidebar clicking here. That's not good. I have 13 errors. You easily see the name of the modules that have been triggered those exceptions. For example here we have external actor 11 from simple fog and just one from PF2E rich templates. I don't want to investigate further, but just keep my instant as much stable as possible. So I'm going to disable the modules because are not mandatory for my next session. Okay, it's good, no error. It's possible there will be uh, other errors when uh, we are going uh, to use Foundry VTT, so uh, you should keep it uh, uh, running. Second step is to check if uh, there is something wrong in the user interface. This happened to me and I took several hours to try to find out the guilty module by disabling module in the configuration. It was a nightmare and frustrating and my player didn't like uh, such big number over their tokens, so I'm talking about these kind of numbers. I show you a quick way to understand what is the module that could visualize the UI. It should be something hooked to the damage taken from a character. Let's keep focusing not only on warnings and errors, but also information. So for example, uh, uh, let's try to update the HP. and see if there is any trigger in the modules that is going to calculate it and put there. In this case, I'm lucky and the module throw an error. Here we go. 
module identify so it's uh, pf2 damage count so i can disable it and check it again oh nice it worked so i don't have any annoying numbers under and over my tokens so my player will be happy there is another way if you want to know which is the module that extends the foundry with the standard ui in the developer tool there is a command to select an element in the interface to inspect it for example i want to check uh, why I have uh, this uh, kind of icon uh, near my actors so I can click here and select uh, this uh, element so you can see uh, here we don't have just the console but also elements and here you have uh, another window to check uh, the uh, CSS so the style that uh, extend uh, the family VTP so in this case here you have all the styles and if you are lucky you can click here and you can see that uh, this CSS uh, has been extended in the permission viewer module so here you have all the uh, path uh, when the found dvd loaded uh, the css to extend the, the interface you can also recognize not only from extended ui but even from the logged event that should be triggered on the ui itself In this example, the module uses an additional CSS, but in the next case, it will use a standard CSS file. Let's have a look. Open up the character sheet, and you can see here different text label, import for Parfine Builder 2E, HLO, GenNotes, and so on now we use the seracan element in the page to inspect it and of course maybe you can try to figure out why we have these gm notes here and you can see here we don't have any any different style it's always the out of the box style so the module is gonna use the, the standard one so it's not possible to understand what model it is but here we have also a different class so we copy and paste this one and we use uh, notepad++ plus plus to search for example finding files in the local folder where you can look for the modules that you have installed and search this class file find all So here we go, we uh, find out that our module is GM nodes because uh, it's using uh, the OpenGM node class and uh, this is the last method that uh, I'm going to propose you and of course uh, you can also use for other, other things in the 
the, your UI in order to figure out uh, the module that you have used. Of course, uh, with experience, you also recognize uh, by yourself uh, that this one is a GM, GM nodes module, this one is an importer, this one is a pop-up uh, module, and so on and so forth. But uh, in the beginning, uh, it's not uh, easy to go through uh, 75 modules and, and understand also the issue that you have.